Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how crypto executives defended the blockchain industry in front of Congress today. Six of the biggest CEOs from the crypto industry came together to testify for nearly five hours this Wednesday before the, finan the House Financial Services Committee about the promises of cryptocurrency. People, uh, renowned people such as uh, Representative uh, Ocasio-Cortez, a Democrat of New York, expressed doubt about executives' argument, presented a radical reshaping of commerce and finance. So this is absolutely huge because it's Congress versus some of the biggest and smartest leaders in the blockchain space. We had Paxos there. We had Coinbase. We had the CEO of FTX. We had Stellar there. We had uh, Gary Gensler there, the chairman of the SEC. So huge names a part of this. But one video that I wanted to highlight here is Mr. Brooks speaking to Mr. Bud, explaining where the United States is with regulation and how it will affect our future. So definitely take a look right here on an industry that the regulators they really don't understand yet and it's going to force the next generation of financial tech to be created outside of our country and well we can't let that happen so mr brooks it's good to see you again uh where do companies draw the line and say that enough is enough with this anti-innovation quote regulation by enforcement uh, and then just decide to take their industry elsewhere to another country Where's the line? Well, Mr. Budd, it's good to see you and thank you for that question. What I would say is in some aspects of the industry, the line is super clear. There are some products that are legal in other countries and are just not legal here. So I take some of the investment products we've talked about earlier today, for example, exchange traded funds. One of the things that makes crypto risky is that consumers may not understand the difference between one token and another token. And so they may want to diversify much as I own an S&P 500 mutual fund. We don't allow that in the United States. We do allow it in Canada. We allow it in Germany, Singapore, Portugal, and a number of other places. So if you're a developer of those products, there's no fuzzy line. It's super clear. You can't do that here. So you have to go abroad. Okay. There are some other can, can you say why we can't do that here? Sure. It, it's because the Securities and Exchange Commission has consistently refused to approve products that other G20 nations have approved. So we're behind the curve? Unquestionably. So given your previous experience running the OCC, I'd love to hear your perspective on where a regulator, where a regulator's authority begins and ends. And remember the joke earlier this year that everything's infrastructure? Well, um, it seems like Chairman Gensler thinks that everything is a digital asset that he can regulate. Uh, he cites the Howey and the Reeves test without providing any other explanations. So Mr. Brooks, what are we missing? because Chairman Gensler clearly doesn't see a limit to his regulatory authority in this area. Well, Congressman, one thing I learned um, running you know, my, my little agency is that the US, and this is not specific to crypto, the US is sort of unique among the developed countries in our fragmented approach to regulation. So, so when I hear people talk about the idea that we need one regulator for crypto, I would say we should first have one regulator for banks, but we have three of them, or if you're an investment bank, five of them. So that's inherent in the system that we've got. What I say to that is the last thing we need to do is add another regulator to a system that's already got dozens of regulators. What we need to do instead is have parity for crypto activity along with traditional finance. If I'm a crypto lending platform, I should probably be regulated by the FDIC. If I'm a crypto trading platform, I should probably be regulated by the CFTC and SEC. But somehow we treat crypto because it's new as different from everything else. And I'm gonna argue that crypto is just a step function improvement in the system. We already have a regulatory system. The laws are super clear how it works, but there's something about crypto that scares people. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just because it's new, but I remember in my banking law class when banks were first allowed to use computers to keep ledgers, people sued over that at the time. I remember when I was a second year lawyer and we got email and the ABA said lawyers couldn't use email because it would travel over this mysterious network of computers. These all seem ridiculous today, but it seems like we haven't really learned the underlying lesson, which is technology usually advances human flourishing. We have a regulatory system. 
let's use it. Thank you. So I thought this was the perfect answer to how, yes, America is falling behind. And if we don't get our regulatory uh, regulations under control and make blockchain usable and accessible to US citizens and companies, people will go elsewhere. And Mr. Brooks was very transparent saying that people are afraid of new things. So they like to say that it's this or it's that without any real backing. I think this was very critical to have these executive CEOs, big faces be in front of Congress today to really give them a full dose of knowledge to understand, to see where the future of finance is and how if America does not adopt soon, they will fall behind. All right, so FTX CEO was there, Alicia from Coinbase was there, uh, Denise Dixon from Stellar was there, huge names, all just working to bring cryptocurrency in to a better light in the United States of America. And we can see that it didn't have much impact on the market. You know, it did have a slight drop from 50, 51 all the way to, let's see, we were all the way at 51. So right back at 49, but that's, that's, that's to be expected with Bitcoin. Bitcoin does this all the time. Um, and as long as we're above that $42,000 mark, I believe that we are still in a bull market. Let me know in the comments below what you believe. And it seems to me that Ethereum just does not care. Um, Ethereum is absolutely uh, killing it and, and resisting the drop uh, sitting at 4,400. And it looks like it's got nowhere but up to go. BNB as well, above that $100 billion market cap. So I'm still very bullish on the space. I believe this is exactly what Congress needed. That was one of my favorite parts of the, the conversations today, as well as many other key people from the blockchain ecosystem. But let me know in the comments below, link any videos or favorite snippets you had from this big news today. And are you bullish or bearish on cryptocurrency? Do you believe the United States is ahead or far, far behind? And will that affect the decisions you make in the future? I'd love to know. I will comment back to all of your questions. But as always, guys, thank you for your time. Nothing's more valuable than your time except your money. So I'll see you next time with some more gems.